The iPad Pro tablets from Apple are the best tablets on the market right now. That still includes the 2018 iPad Pro in addition to the new 2020 generation. But to truly make them amazing for watching movies, playing games and to use as a computer, you need some accessories. Well, I'm NJ for MyNextTablet.com and here are the keyboards, gamepads, USB-C hubs, cases and many other accessories I'm using with the iPad Pro. <laughs> Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm reviewing pretty much every tablet that is released from all major manufacturers like Samsung, Apple, Microsoft, Huawei, Lenovo and many others. You can get all of these accessories for the 2020 and 2018 generations of the iPad Pro and they either work with both the 11 inch and 12.9 inch models or their special sizes for each. The second generation Apple Pencil is the most obvious accessory for the iPad Pro. While it is quite expensive with a price tag of $129, it does work very well. It's a pressure sensitive stylus that you can use for handwriting notes or to use in apps like Photoshop or to paint paintings with. It's charged wirelessly on top of the tablet. Keep in mind that the first generation Apple Pencil is not supported. If you want to work a lot and if you even want to replace your laptop with the iPad, then I think the Apple Magic Keyboard is the best keyboard for that. It's a kind of keyboard dock, which is quite heavy, but transforms the tablet into a notebook. It has its own USB-C port, which you can use to charge the iPad so that its port is free for other accessories like SSDs or SD card readers. The keyboard is fantastic because the keys have a real travel of one millimeter. It also has a background light. Underneath the keyboard we get a trackpad which is small but works great. Sadly the price is quite high. You will have to pay at least $299 which is crazy expensive. A slightly cheaper alternative is the Apple Smart Keyboard Folio. It's not a keyboard dock, instead it's more of a keyboard cover. The keyboard itself is not as good as a Magic Keyboard and it's lacking a touchpad. You can stand up the tablet in two different angles when writing. While the keyboard is not perfect because you can press down the keys only a little bit, I think it's a good compromise of comfort and portability. I've written tons of articles with this keyboard and I've gotten used to the tighter space on the 11 inch one. The keyboard for the 12.9 inch one is a normal size keyboard. Apple sells different sizes for the 11 inch and 12.9 inch version of course and the camera cutout for the 2020 generation is bigger than previously. But besides that they all work the same. You will have to pay between $179 and $199. A cheaper but also good travel keyboard is the Logitech Keys to Go keyboard. Since it does not have a built in case you can use it with every third party case. It is very slim and light and you can connect it to your iPad or other devices using Bluetooth. One downside is that you've got to charge it separately using a micro USB charger. The keyboard itself is quite similar to the official one from Apple. You can't press down the keys much and just like the 11 inch smart keyboard fool you, you've got to get used to the tighter space. But I think it's a great alternative travel keyboard if you are not writing with it every day or want to save some money it costs around $70. A great Bluetooth keyboard for your desk is the Logitech K380. It's a standard full size keyboard that works with Windows, Android and iPadOS. Basically this is your normal kind of keyboard with round keys. You don't have to get used to anything here. It's not great for traveling but an affordable choice for your desk that costs around $40. If you're looking for a more premium keyboard for your desk, you should check out the Logitech K780. It works with Windows, Android and iPadOS too. In this case you also get a built-in stand which works great. And it has a numbers pad and is more premium feeling in general. Nothing to travel with of course, but a great choice if you want to use your iPad Pro as a computer. It costs under $70. You can get the Apple Magic trackpad for your iPad Pro. But unless you're using it with another device already, you can also get any mouse. Personally I'm using the Logitech M705 with every device I'm using. It's just my normal inexpensive mouse that costs around $30. But again you can use pretty much every mouse now. If you're not using the Apple Smart Keyboard Folio, I would get a proper case that protects the tablet from all sides. I've gotten the Z-Top case for the Apple Pro that supports auto wake and sleep and has a special slot for the Apple Pencil. It's positioned in a way so that the stylus gets charged at that spot too. Basically this is a very simple but effective rubber case. It seems to protect the tablet well and you can fold the lid as a stand. It costs between $15 and $20. 
I also got the Nido tablet sleeve for the 11 inch iPad Pro that fits the tablet including the smart folio keyboard but also including the Logitech keys to go for example. It's a simple tablet sleeve that protects it from all sides and is well padded. On the front there's another small pocket for accessories. The sleeve costs around $12. My 2018 iPad Pro has a bigger and a couple of smaller scratches on the screen even though I've been quite careful. Well needless to say that I decided to use a screen protector for the 2020 generation. I went for a glass screen protector from iPica. Sometimes this brand seems to be called Sparin too. Well it's a standard glass screen protector that costs around $10. One of my favorite features is the USB-C port and I've gotten the Vava 9-in-1 USB-C hub for it and I fell in love with it. It has tons of ports like another USB-C one, three USB Type-A ports, an Ethernet jack, an HDMI out, a microSD and a full side SD card reader. And another port, the best one in this case is standard headphone jack which is missing on the tablet itself. You can connect the iPad Pro to external monitors, connect keyboards, a mouse and external storage. A USB-C hub can be great for that. I've even connected it to a hotel TV once because I needed to watch the new Picard show on Amazon Prime and it wasn't a smart TV. The Vava 9-in-1 USB-C hub costs around $50. If you don't need an expensive USB-C hub because you're not using that many ports you can also check out the Tutu USB-C dongle. It's a very simple dongle that converts a USB 3.0 port, a microSD and a full size SD card reader to USB-C. You can get it for just $10 and it works great. As I said you can connect external storage to your iPad Pro. I'm using lots of external SSDs and I've used several from both SanDisk and Samsung in the past. Both work great on the iPad Pro and I would just get the cheaper of the two. As far as I've tested they are mostly the same anyway. You've got to pay around $150 for one terabyte of external SSD storage right now. Since the iPad Pro does not have a headphone jack you will either have to use an adapter or get a pair of wireless headphones. Since I'm traveling a lot and more and more devices are lacking a headphone jack I decided to get wireless ones. I've gotten the Bose Headphone 700 which are the best wireless headphones according to review sites like the Wirecutter. While I haven't reviewed many headphones myself they are very good indeed. The battery life is very long, the sound quality is fantastic and the active noise cancelling is very good. I've worn them on 13 hour flights and they're comfortable enough for that and work great with the iPad Pro. Their major downside is the price though you will have to pay around $350. Pretty much every game for the iPad Pro is optimized for touch input of course. However if you want you can use a real gamepad with the tablet. I've been testing the Microsoft Xbox wireless controller with almost every tablet I reviewed in the last couple of months and it's been great for that. The controller works with Windows, Android and iPadOS well and with the Xbox of course. It costs around $60. The Ugreen tablet stand has been my favorite travel stand because it folds up very small and because it is very light. Even though it's a plastic stand it is very well built and I've been using mine for over 2 years. It's a nice simple stand that costs around $10. If you're looking for a more solid stand for your desk for instance you can check out the Lamical aluminium tablet stand. It's much heavier and does not fold up as well but it seems sturdier and can hold your tablet higher. So I think it's a great stand to use at home. You'll have to pay around 15 US dollars. Now the next accessory might be interesting for photographers only. After I realized that I just need the iPad Pro for editing photos I decided to get a bag that fits the tablet, a camera and one or two lenses. It's the Tenba Messenger DNA11 camera bag that fits the 11 inch iPad Pro perfectly. You've got to get the DNA13 for the 12.9 inch one. I'm not using this bag daily and sometimes I've got to use a big camera bag that could also fit a big laptop but it's been a great fit for when I'm going to a cafe to work with the iPad or when I'm taking photos with a light setup while traveling and want to work or edit in between. This is a camera bag and that also means it's quite expensive with a price tag of around $150. Alright these are the accessories I've been using with the Apple iPad Pro. If you have any questions please write them down below in the comments and also give us your recommendations. What accessories are you using with the iPad Pro? I'm sure every owner would be interested in your recommendations. I'm Andrzej from MyNextTablet.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.